Hey folks, I'm back in Slocum, Alabama. It's April 29th, and I wanted to do a quick little follow-up video here. On Valentine's Day, February 14th, we uh, got into this pallet right here. Uh, there was one colony here that was really strong, and I decided to go ahead and split it. It was, it was a little early in the season, uh, but we went ahead and made a four-way split out of that. So uh, I'll put a link to that video in the description down below. On March 24th, I came back and checked on them, and all four splits were doing okay. They all had laying queens in there. I'll put a link to that video in the description down below as well. So as you can see, I've stacked a few boxes on a couple of them there, and we've done a little bit to them since then. But I'd like to just go through them real quick and just show you the progress, show you how they're doing now a few weeks later. But when we're done with that, I'm gonna go over and uh, we're gonna check on Big Red. If you remember, about three weeks ago, I was marking some queens and I got a little crazy with the marker, and one of the queens got marked too much and went, went ran right down her wings. I didn't know how she would respond, but she seemed to do well and was surviving. So we'll go check on her and make sure she's still okay. Let's get to work. Oh wow, look at this. They're definitely looking good. Look at all the bees on the lid. They're starting to build comb up here, filling that space. And so I think we can definitely take the shim off now. I wanna give a quick shout out to one of my viewers. It's been a, a while ago. Uh, she really got on to me for scraping the burr comb and throwing it on the ground. So since then, I've been way more careful to try to preserve that comb, and I've actually gotten a fair amount of wax out of it. And uh, boy, she was on me, but and I needed it. I needed to be a little criticized by that. It was constructive criticism, and and I've got my. I try to keep my uh, burr comb bucket with me, and I usually scrape the comb off and throw it in here, and then we melt it down the solar wax melter. I got a video or two on that as well. Yeah, they've got it glued down here. It's been, I don't, can't remember when I went through these last. It's probably been at least three weeks ago. It may have been the same day that we found Big Red. I might have peeked in on them and so forth. But obviously, I don't think they need the bonding anymore. Kind of clean the frames up so I can get that lid back on here. Just going to dump the bees like this into the hive. When I did that, I actually kind of put the lid on the edge like this so most of the bees would just fall into the colony. That keeps you from smashing bees. I think it works pretty well typically, so. Now what I do to make these shims, I kind of got this idea from Mike Berry. Uh, I just take old bee boxes and kind of cut them around in about a one, one and a half inch shim right here, whatever distance you want. They kind of fall apart, um, but they work. And uh, you know, otherwise what are you gonna do? Just burn, the, burn them and it's nothing fancy, but it works for the, for the job. Uh, bees all the way out here on the outside frame. Last time I was in here, there was just a, they're just kind of in the middle. There's a fair amount of brood, but they were just trying to really get established. But you can see we have bees on the outside frame now. This colony was pretty weak after the splits because I think the bees that were in here that I pulled over, most of them went back to the donor colony. They really had a low population. Had to kind of nurse them along a little bit there at first. Had a little brood. We got probably a larva brood. Man, now look at this next frame. Right here. Isn't that just absolutely amazing? Beautiful frame right there, all the brood. Remember these are, these are queens that early, early in the year, they went out and got mated and you know, I said we had drones and we definitely did, but it was kind of risky to do that split the way I did it. There must've been a really nice little uh, time in the weather when we made these splits. Oh, look what I did there. They've just built the bottom of that frame out. I think that may have already been built out. I'm not sure, but it's laying up drones in there. That'll be good. I think these, these look like pretty good genetics. Of course, I really don't know, but we're gonna produce a lot of drones for the area. That's one thing that happens for those who may not know, if you put a medium or a small frame into a bigger box, they just don't like that open space and so they'll draw it out below and then they'll fill it up with uh, brood. Typically it's drone comb, it seems like when they do that. Isn't this a healthy looking colony, y'all? I'm excited about it. Got pollen, we got some brood here. And uh, she's doing really good. I, that's about all I really need to see. And they're all the way over here to this other edge. Let me look, pull out this frame right here. I think this must have been foundation. Let's see what they're doing here. This must have been a brand new frame. It looks like it was. So this is a brand new frame I put in there. So they've drawn it all out. Yeah, she's starting to lay in here in the cells. Isn't that cool? There she is. There's our beautiful queen right here. She's a fully mature queen now. She's really grown into her body. 
and I think she's going to do good things for us. Got her marked and ready to go. I don't want to roll the queen, which means, you know, obviously if you push them down in the hive, it can roll them and, and smash them. So I'm actually going to move these frames right here over a little bit, give us a little more space to drop her down in there like this. I'm just going to take her and gently put her down in there. Plenty of room like this. Just slide it over gently, slowly against that other frame right there. Then we can work in confidence, push the rest of these frames over. And we're good to go. Now we have had kind of a, a rough year this year as far as like the honey flow, the privet, at least where most of my bees are, has not done much. And so these bees have done well without a whole lot of food, but they're not packing a lot of nectar or honey. And of course they've been focused on growth. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a, a honey super on here. I guess, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put a queen excluder on here. I think they'll work their way up into it, hopefully. Just give them some more space. I normally like to give them a little time to move up before I add the queen excluder. We have tallow that's about to bloom a little bit early. And so I just want them to go up here and start making honey. I'm afraid our honey crop may not be as good this year as what it's been in the past, but we'll see. Okay, got some comb there. I like to run nine frames if it's drawn comb in my honey supers. It seems to work good. And I got this orange spacer here. I prefer the metal one, but I can't find my metal one. So I ordered a couple of orange ones. I ordered these from Hillco. Space them out, evenly spaced. Put the lid on. I'm gonna put a little stick in the corner here. Um, that'll allow the bees kind of a little upper interest, a little ventilation. I think it helps. If I've got more than one box stacked, I offset them a little bit forward. You can see it on that box over there. See it's offset a little bit right here. But with just one box, that's the way to do it. Most typical way to do it, to let them come up into the honey boxes, is to go ahead and just put it on there without an excluder and let them move on up. But in this case, I think to maximize this, hopefully, uh, they'll come on up and start working. I really just don't know if I'll get back down here in the next week or two, and this flow hopefully is gonna hit here hard pretty quick. Hopefully they'll move on up. We'll see, it's an experiment. We'll see how they do. Okay, this is the other one that's a single deep here. This is the other one that was a little bit weak after the splits. Looks like they have a similar situation. They may not be quite as strong as the first one, but I don't know if you could tell how calm they are there. Look at them, they're just so calm. Maybe you got some good genetics here maybe, as far as attitude goes. All right, definitely not as strong at this point in time as far as population goes. Let's just look real quick and see what we have going on here. We got bees out here, third frame in. And uh, we got brood all through here. Eggs over here. Nice little brood pattern. She's starting to fill it up. Yeah, lots of brood all through here. It's looking good, nice pattern. Look at that. Nice little brood pattern once again. So we have all the signs of a healthy colony here. Uh, just not growing as fast as that other one was. I'm just gonna leave this one alone, close it up. You really wanna have them probably covering 80% of the frames in here at least before you go ahead and, and add honey boxes. Let's check this one out on this side. This is another new frame it looks like. Let's see if they're, it looks like they're drawing them out this way. Real simple. Yeah, so they're drawing this frame out. So they're working their way kind of, it seems like, in that direction, which is okay. Just gonna give them a little more time before I add a honey box on here. I have number three. This one does have a honey box on it. Oop. This doesn't happen very often, but it's important to kind of check your lids because the queen is right here on the lid, see her? How about that? She's all the way up here. I must have put a box of foundation on here and drawn it out. And I'm guessing the queen's probably laying up here. Nope, we got honey up here, that's strange. The queen won't come up above the foundation or the honey lots of times, but she sure did. Nothing is an absolute, as Greg Burns says in beekeeping. So let's see, what do I wanna do with her? Just gonna take her and set her down in that box. Oh, she, is. she went down in there now. So it does look like they're actually uh, drawing this box out. They're putting some honey in here. A little bit of wonky comb solution for that. Typically is just to scrape it off. Let them try again. 
They usually do pretty good on this Pierco triple wax foundation, which is mostly what I try to get. I do have some Premier foundation, they do okay with that as well. It's important too, if you put new foundation in a honey box, to make sure you got 10 frames in there. Once they draw it out, then you can go with nine, but 10 to start off with is always a good idea. Now that is a beautiful looking box of bees right there. Got some brood in here. Not a beautiful brood pattern. I'm well, not super excited about that, but I do see some pollen mixed in there, so I don't know if she was just laying around the pollen or what. Let's get more towards the center of the hive here and just see if we see a little better brood pattern. It's not beautiful. Once again, we got pollen on that frame too, though. So these bees are sticking whatever they can, wherever they can, as far as like food and brood and so forth. Yeah, see, they've got brood pretty much everywhere. There's not pollen kind of trying to figure it out, it looks like. Yeah, there are eggs and brood like in every, that might be also where there were some queen cells earlier. But there are eggs and, and larvae all in there. So this is a very healthy colony. Now I'm gonna pull the next frame out just so you can see. It looks like it's a little better brood pattern. Probably didn't have as much pollen mixed in. Let's see. Ooh, I saw they're drawing this frame out. They tried to draw it out, didn't draw it completely out very well, but it's a pretty good brood pattern. Not perfect, but it's pretty good. She's been a busy girl. So I'm gonna throw a queen excluder on here and see if they can make us some honey. Okay. Okay, make sure, let's give a foundation, make sure you push it all together really tight. Uh, I'm going to put a second box on here too with some comb, maybe they can fill it up. So I stagger it a little bit right there in the back. That creates a little bee space for them. It also creates, I guess, a ventilation factor and they really like that. It seems to work well. I also did it on this one over here. Um, you can see, if you don't do that, you can at least put a stick or something under the corner. Helps them come up through that queen excluder, I think, at least in theory. Uh, that's why I do it. Okay, I already have a queen excluder on this one, so we'll just peek in here. Just starting to work that upper box. Let's see what the bottom honey super looks like now. I got a lot more bees in there, and they're calmly working that comb. Let's see if they're actually putting some honey in there. They're actually doing it. They got some honey coming in. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to pull this box off. We'll peek down on the bottom real quick. I don't think we have anything to worry about with this colony, actually. They look pretty good. So you can tell it's a pretty healthy looking colony. Extra box on there. They didn't really draw this uh, foundation out too good yet. Kind of just working on it a little bit. Let's get over here and see if we can find some brood. Definitely got some brood and it's a beautiful pattern. Look at that. Pull one more frame out and then we're gonna close her up and let them do their thing. Look at that frame of brood right there. Isn't that pretty? I'm hoping a nice flow kicks in here and they get, they're able to pack a lot of honey in, but so far it's been kind of a bust around here. The privet, at least where my bees are so far, has been very lackluster and almost non-existent. I've had some people tell me theirs have been bringing it in, but I haven't seen a lot of it right here where my bees are. I thought I might have it down here in Slocum, um, a little further south, but you know, these bees are obviously bringing a little something in and they're growing, but they're not packing honey in like they often are this time of the year. So really hoping something starts blooming that tallow kicks in here quick because I need some honey. Got a lot of customers. Let's go check on Big Red. All right, this is the hive where Big Red is. If you remember, I had a marker malfunction here and I've marked a bunch of queens before and after that and haven't had that happen again, but made for kind of a cool storyline. Hopefully she's doing good. I came in a week after I did that and she seemed just fine. Shouldn't be hard to see, huh? But now they're looking pretty, pretty good. Looks like they're actually building some wax right here. Got a little honey coming in here maybe. Oh, uh, they're gonna get a little feisty with me getting stung right there. I don't want to put my other jacket on, but I may have to. They're flying around pretty feisty here and it is getting cloudy. I think we got some rain coming in, so I need to pick up the pace a little bit, but just thought I'd show you some of this. Now these girls are definitely finding some nectar. Look at that, whole frame of nectar. So that's a good sign, I like it. Man, they're really just doing well. There she is, can you see her? Oh my gosh, 
Look at her. She ain't hard to see. She's right there. Big Red's not hard to find. She's just glowing at us. So she's doing fine. A lot of people said they'd supersede her in a couple of weeks, and some people said that they've done it and they've done fine. And in this case, looks like we have a, a good story to tell, and maybe she'll be with us for a good long while. And man, she's really doing well. We got eggs in every cell in this frame that are just drawn out. So that's all we got to see. What an experience that was. If you get a chance to go back and watch that video, I, I'm going to put it in the description down below. Ah, you're getting me up. They're trying to sting me. Look at them. Ah, you got me right there. Dang it. For some reason, they like to sting me around the wrist. I don't know what it is. Even when I don't have a jacket on, they still like to get me right there. I'm going to go ahead and move this frame of foundation in one right here. Maybe they'll draw it out quicker. I'm also going to put a honey box on here. Might as well, right? They look like they're exploding. So the story of Big Red is good so far. The saga continues. Our four-way split's doing good over there, and Big Red is still alive and laying it up. Well, that was kind of fun. It was good to check back on this. It's good to see Big Red doing well, and it's good to see that the splits are doing well. And uh, it's just kind of fun when a plan comes together. I've had plenty of experiences this spring where plans didn't come together, but this is a positive experience for me. And I hope you've enjoyed coming along for the ride. I got a lot of work to do before this uh, rain comes in, so I better get busy. Leave me a comment down below. I'm gonna put a link for that original four-way split right here. I'm gonna put a link for where I marked uh, Big Red right here. Y'all take care, be safe, and we'll catch you on the next one. <music>